Hey everyone, I have plans on building my own DIY uh, solar power station and that's what this piece of plywood is right here. This is a four by two foot piece of plywood and I'm going to attach all the stuff on here. In this video though, before I go ahead and make that project and I'll be, have that video pretty soon, uh, I wanted to test out these two components right here just to make sure everything works. And what this is, is Renergy sent me this 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery right here. It's a self-heating battery, uh, along with the 1000 watt power inverter. Now, everything else in this build, I bought myself. I decided I wanted to go with all Renergy. So I've got this charge controller right here that I purchased. I got the solar panel I purchased. Uh, I want to do it all the same. So in this video... I'm going to go over a little bit about the battery, a little bit about the inverter, and then I'm also going to test these out with some a few different things that might be useful in a grid down situation in a power outage uh, for preparedness. Uh, a water filter uh, and a couple of other things. So first off, this battery right here is pretty... It's pretty cool. It's one of, you know, there are, there are different levels of batteries. You've got the purest that like the Battle Borns and things like that. Renergy products, to me, are above the, you know, the, the, the Power Queens and those, those cheaper batteries. They're really quality made, but at a lower price. So this is for, this is just a, a really good, reliable battery for the average person that isn't really doesn't really geek out about the whole off-grid solar stuff if you want something that's really quality uh, and you know is going to work then a, a renergy product is uh you know is something you know you can depend on uh, it also has a shelf mode and it's got this connector it comes with this connector right here and it goes into this up port right here which right now i have the monitor plugged into it but Basically, shelf mode is a really low voltage, and that way, if you're not using this, if you're storing it, you can turn it on shelf mode uh, just by pressing this button right here, uh, and it will put it in shelf mode. So it's really, really low self-discharge. Uh, and then you just hit press, hold it and press it for a little bit, and it turns it back on, and you can test the voltage, and you'll see uh, you'll be, this one is only 75% charged. So right now, we're at 13.4 uh, now, also with this this up port right here, you've got two different ports. So this port is for a Cat5 cable, which you can, uh, if you have a couple batteries, you can tie them together and they will communicate uh, with each other. They have their module, it's called a BT2, where you can get the stats from your battery on your cell phone, uh, monitor it from your phone. If you hooked up both batteries together, you would get the stats uh, from both batteries. So with this... A battery monitor that comes with this battery right here you can see here it's got uh, right now we're at 72 point or 75.2 state of charge and this is a hundred amp hour battery so the amp hours is going to be the same 75.2 it tells you uh, what load you're you're pulling so right right now I've got it hooked up to one 100 watt solar panel and it's outside and it's overcast and snowy so we're not getting a whole lot of juice. So I've got the, the little iPad plugged in right there. That's the only thing right now. Uh, and then I'm still getting 1.1 amps. I think that takes like a half an amp. Uh, at any rate, uh, this and tells you what your battery voltage is at uh, and then state of charge. So this is kind of cool to uh, just get some basic readings on your battery. Uh, and I have, a plan, I have plans when I put this all together, I'm going to mount everything on this board right here and and have everything situated so i'll have this as well as uh, all these other components and and a lot more that you're not seeing here in the video another thing i like about this battery and it really depends on you uh, is the it doesn't have the strap on the top of the battery so you've got these two side handles right here that you can pick the battery up from uh, it's it like i said it's really up to you you can't really stack anything on top of this because of the those right there but it is kind of convenient. I, I know that some people like the strap because it's one-handed. You can carry it. Uh, it's really up to you. But uh, just kind of a sleek design. Uh, also on this battery, it uh, see if I can find the picture here. You've got uh, the charging current is 50 amps, which is really high. Uh, if you've got a really nice charger, you might be able to get to that. You would need 
four or five solar panels at max power uh, to get maybe even six or seven to get to 50 amps. Uh, and the discharge current is 100 amps. Now this is important because at 100 amps, and in the, in the manual it says this is good for, uh, in an emergency, 125 amps. But 100 amps is 1200 watts. So if you were planning on getting a larger inverter, say a 2000 watt inverter, this one battery is not going to cut it. Uh, in an emergency, you could go to one, 125 amps, which is 1500 watts, which is pretty good. And I'll go into a little bit more uh, later in this video about uh, you know, this one versus 2000 watts and, and which is better for preparedness. But just keep in mind that if you wanted to go under above that 100 amps, you would need to get another battery, tie them together, then you would have 200 amps uh, and so on. So uh, just know that the limitations, it's just because it's a 100 amp hour battery doesn't mean you're going to be able to charge the, or to run those larger electronics. Uh, you are uh, stuck at that 100 amps. Another great thing about this battery, and I've watched a few videos of people tearing these down. Will Prowse has one that's a couple years old, different model than this, but basically the same battery. Uh, these have the pouch cells inside them, which are really nice. But he was raving about how well constructed and how good the battery management system is in this. And the battery management system, like here it says on the website, over... 20 protection features and warnings. So it's got an overcharge or overcurrent protection, undercurrent protection, undercharge protection, just a bunch of different things. Uh, and the battery management system in this is top rate. And this is one of those things, if you get one of the cheaper batteries, you're, you're getting a sort of a cheaper battery management system as well. So with this being the heart of your system, whatever you're going to set up, you want to make sure uh, this is where most of your money is going to go is in the battery so you really want to make sure that you're getting a good quality product it doesn't necessarily mean the most expensive but just a good quality product and that's where the price point of this Renergy I think is is pretty good because it's not the high-end battle born price and it's not that low-end power queen price either uh, it's a reliable product and Renergy has been around a long time and a lot of people use them so uh, just a, a really quality battery from all the research I've done, uh, really well put together and is something that as long as you take care of it and do everything correctly, uh, it's going to last you. I believe they have a five-year warranty uh, and t say it's got a 10-year shelf life. So now the 1,000 the watt inverter, and I, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this because I'm going to run some tests on this, but it's a pure sine wave inverter. A modified sine wave inverter, sort of like squares, where it, uh, you know, it jumps up and down. Where a pure sine wave inverter is more of a flow. This is what you get from being tied to the grid. This is the electricity that comes into your house. is is basically pure sine wave. So this is going to be a, a pure sine wave inverter is going to match the the current coming into your home. Whereas a modified sine wave inverter will work for some things, but it could damage some electronics as well. You are going to pay a little bit more for a pure sine wave inverter, but it is worth it depending on what you're going to be using it for. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to move this stuff out of the way and I want to test this out. Uh, this also comes with, uh, this inverter comes with these cables. These are four gauge wires that hook up to the battery. If you were going to go with two batteries, 200 amp hours, you would need to probably uh, make those a little bit larger uh, two gauge wire uh, to be able to run that current through there. When I go through my whole build, I'll go through more detail about that. But this has got the on and off switch, which for my use isn't really, you know, it's I'm probably not going to use it. So if I were to turn this on over here uh, and then turn that on, it's going to put power on there. If I turn it off, it's going to take power away from there. Um, what this would be useful for is if you have an RV or if you have your inverter tucked under, so, uh, you know, tucked away somewhere, uh, having a switch that you could mount on your wall and you just turn that inverter on would be fantastic. I don't know for this build, what I'm doing, that it's going to be useful, but it is cool to have. So at any rate, what I want to do is I'm going to move this tablet out of the way and then we're going to test a few different products with this. Uh, the first one I'm going to do is just this little tiny space heater. Let me get this out of the way here. 
And I purposefully chose some some items that would be useful in a preparedness situation. So the first one I've got here is this little cheap uh, 400 watt space heater that I got from Walmart. And honestly, I wouldn't suggest anything like this. I you, this is one thing you want to you want to get a very a good quality product. This would be useful. The 400 watts is great, but the fact that it's a a, a Walmart brand. I'm just not sure about the quality of it and all that, but let's go ahead and plug that in. First, I'm going to get my watt meter right here, plug this in, and that way we can see what this is actually pulling. So let's turn this on. And it's ramping up here. And on this inverter, it's pulling about 400 watts, pretty close to 400 watts. Now this little heater right here at 400 watts, I'm gonna test this, this thing out later, maybe a, a higher quality brand, but to heat a room, a small room like the one I'm in now, this would probably do pretty well because it kicks off some pretty good heat at just 400 watts so uh, this would be that emergency small room type situation which would be which would be good and having just a thousand watt inverter uh, would be um, fantastic now if you bump this up to 2000 watt inverter you could get yourself a 1500 watt uh, heater which would which would be fantastic so uh, at any rate so this is running at about 300 watts right now uh, pretty good uh, the inverter hasn't the fan hasn't kicked on or anything uh, not anywhere near the max on here, but it's running good. So let's go ahead and try our next one, which is the SimPure water filter that I did a review on in the past. I'll put this right over there. We'll plug this sucker in, and I will put the water tank on it. And it's telling me to put the water tank on, so we'll grab this water tank right here. Put that on it. And now it is going to fill up that inner tank. And what's cool about this water filter is it only takes about 40 watts to run. So this is, you know, pretty low on this. This water filter is fantastic. It's a reverse osmosis water filter. And in a preparedness situation where you've got questionable water, uh, this thing uh, is fantastic. It's a little bit loud, uh, but it works great. It's gonna work better than a Berkey or any of those. So I really like this. And the fact that it runs on such low wattage uh, is, is perfect because you're not gonna use a lot of power uh, to filter water with this thing. All right, so while that's still running, we'll go ahead and just do a little bit of water here. And then that is, uh, the wattage actually went down as it's dispensing the water, which is pretty cool. And then as it kicks back on, you've got your wattage going back up to uh, 25. I've seen it go up near 40, so pretty cool. It actually works for uh, the water filter as well, which I figured it would. It's really low wattage, but... Uh, something that would be nice and super convenient. Okay, so let's try the next one here. Get this out of the way. And we've got this ice maker right here, which you might not think is one of those life-saving supplies or uh, prepping supplies, but it's actually... Let me move this into the picture here a little bit more. This is actually pretty cool because... In a grid down situation, it's not always worst case scenario disaster. And a little ice maker like this, if you are drinking warm water, room temperature water, uh, having something like this is gonna be, it's, it's gonna be a luxury. Not something that you absolutely need, but having a little ice maker like this could, could be uh, something you'd use quite a bit. So let's go ahead and plug this sucker in and we're gonna have to pull this up because of the cord. But we will turn this on now. And what I'm gonna do is just let this run and make some ice. And on this, 
Right now we're using one watt as it gets going. We'll see how it does once it starts doing the ice and um, using the using more power. We'll see where it goes. So right now we're using about 85 watts, uh, which is not bad at all. Another cool thing with this battery monitor right here, you can actually, it will tell you, so right here it will tell you that 12.8 hours, and this is, again, it's 74% full, but 12.8 hours I can run this machine, which is going at 83 watts right here. So it'll give you the information you need. Whatever load you have on there, uh, you can uh, measure how long you're going to be able to use that. All right, so now looks like it's getting ready to drop the first batch. And this takes about seven minutes for this to complete one little batch of ice, which I believe is eight cubes. Uh, and it takes about 100 watts to run this. So for basically, it takes about an hour, a little bit over an hour to fill this whole tray right here. So basically, one amp hour, you can fill this whole tray. So it doesn't take a lot of energy. And I'll tell you what, if it's hot in the summertime, the power's out, uh, this is going to be something uh, that you're going to want. Granted, you've got the freezer, refrigerator, but if it's a few days, I'll tell you what, you pull this thing out, it's going to be fantastic. So uh, one last thing I tested with this as well is in my harvest right, I did some eggs. And I, I blend what you do with the eggs. You scramble the eggs, you freeze dry them, and they're raw, and then you put them in the blender. I tested this out in the blender, uh, and with this thousand watt inverter right here, ran it. It was only uh, it only used about 350 watts, and that is a 1200 watt blender right there. But it was on low mode. Even on the highest mode on that 1200 watt blender, uh, it only reached like 600 watts. So. Uh, this handles that just fine. Not that you would need a blender in, in some sort of disaster type situation, but you never know. This little watt meter right here is fantastic to be able to tell. Just because something says that it's 1,200 watts doesn't necessarily mean it's going to pull that much. So having this right here uh, is, and I think this was like 15 bucks on Amazon, is a great way uh, to just figure out what sort of energy you're using. I use this mainly for my harvest right to figure out how much uh, during the month, how much energy, how much it's costing me to run the harvest right, which it averages about three bucks a batch. Uh, totally different video, but but at any rate, it runs all of these as long as you keep below this thousand watts. The fan never kicked on. Uh, I never really juiced it um, really high or anything like that. But uh, as long as you keep it uh, below the thousand watts, this is going to run whatever you need. Oh, more power so now to test this out at its full capacity I'm not gonna run this for very long but I'm gonna see after about a minute if this will still run this hot plate is 1200 watts so I don't expect this to be able to handle it uh, but we are going to test it out and see so I will plug that in there and then we will just crank this on to the lowest setting uh, and see what sort of wattage we are getting from this. So right now we're at 1,066, 1,069. So we're right above what this uh, is rated at. And I assume that being just like this, it's going to be fine. Let's see if we kick it up a little bit, if that goes up. You know, we're at 1,075. So we're getting close to 1100 right here. If I crank that to the max, we're still right around that 1,068, uh, 1,050 range. So this is doing just fine with that. And it's been, uh, you know, longer than 30 seconds or so. So you could, in an emergency, probably power this little hot plate right there. I just, for me, I'm not going to go over that recommended rating because I just don't want to damage the unit. So I wouldn't want to use something like this all the time. I would want to kick up to a larger inverter. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off now. 
So as far as a from a preparedness perspective, I wanted to use that as an example because something that's a lot of the appliances that you have are going to be higher than a thousand watts. Uh, coffee makers can be uh, refrigerators are far lower than a thousand watts, so you could run a refrigerator on a thousand watt inverter and, and this battery. But from a preparedness perspective, this is good for a lot of things. But what you really probably want would be maybe two of these 100 amp hour batteries and a 2000 watt inverter because in your home, your typical wall outlet is rated for, if it's a 15 amp fuse, it's rated for about 1800 watts. So basically anything you'll plug into your home uh, is going to be less than 1800 watts. So a 2000 watt inverter would be great. You could get a 2000 watt inverter with just one battery but you still can't go above that 1200 watts like I explained earlier. So you would need two batteries to get up to that 1500, uh, you know, that, that higher wattage, those higher wattage appliances. So just know what, your, what you have and what you can do with it. Sort of size everything out uh, before, uh, so you know exactly what you need basically. Now with this, this kit, now that I've tested this out and everything works great, I'm going to uh, take this piece of wood right here and I'm going to take all the components. I've got all the fuses, I've got the switches, I've got the charge controller which is right over here uh, and, and this is hooked up to one 100 watt solar panel right now. Eventually that's going to be kicked up to like 240, 250 uh, which is why I got this large uh, Renergy 30 amp charge controller right here uh, and it's, I've also got the BT-1 which is a monitor basically let me see if i can pull it up on my phone here a monitor that just tells you uh, the state of your battery and everything so if you go into the phone you tap on tap on that and it will tell you your battery information right now it's charging at 2.48 volts so the sun must be peeking out a little bit because it's colder than heck outside uh, and this just gives you all the information of your battery. The 100% state of charge, you just ignore that because uh, it's not going to give you correct readings. That's why you would need to look on the other one. But I'm going to go through the whole setup, all the different wires I needed, all the different connections, and all that stuff in the next video. Uh, so watch for that. If you do have any questions about these, these products right here, uh, the Renergy 100 amp hour smart battery with heating function, the 1000 watt inverter, even the Rover right there, which I'll be doing a separate review on later on. Uh, but just Renergy has got some really, really reliable products. Uh, and it's you're, you're paying a little bit more than some of the cheap stuff, but you're getting reliability. Uh, like I said, from what I've, I've seen, the videos I've watched, this is a really high quality built battery and a really good battery. So uh, for the price, you're getting reliability. And that's exactly what we want in a SHTF or survival situation, disaster, grid down situation. We want something we know is going to work. And that's what these, uh, that's what Renergy offers right there. So at any rate, like I said, I'll be doing the next video with my DIY solar charger setup. If you have any questions about this or any suggestions uh, as far as the next video and all that, let me know. But uh, until next time, take care and prepare everyone. We'll talk to you all later.